8 Reasons Your Muscles Are Not Growing It's definitely not easy to build muscles, especially after you're no longer a beginner. So, you might be working out hard and eating right, but no matter how hard you try, your muscles are still not growing. This is a common problem faced by many guys that work out a lot but hardly experience any results. Even if their workouts are already challenging. And really, it comes down to 8 key reasons why you're trying so hard but not seeing much growth. Mistake number 1. Not training each muscle often enough. A survey of 127 competitive male bodybuilders found that more than two-thirds of them trained each muscle group only once per week. This is what's known as a bro split, where you work pretty much one muscle per day. And it allows you to really focus on that muscle and break it down for an incredible pump. But is that optimal? Well, the answer is no, as shown by multiple studies. Specifically, in one of these studies, Researchers observed the difference in the rate of muscle growth between training a muscle once or three times per week, with a similar total training volume between both groups. And the results showed that those who trained each muscle three times per week gained much more muscle than those who trained each muscle less often. In another study, participants either performed all their weekly exercise volume in one giant full-body workout, or they spread out the same training volume so they did the same amount of sets and reps, but they divided that volume into three smaller full body sessions. And once again, those who trained more often gained significantly more muscle. The once a week subjects increased their lean body mass by only 1%, while those that trained each muscle three times per week gained 8%. And like I said, many other studies also show similar results. One reason why it's better to train each muscle more often than once a week is, because if you do a ton of sets and reps all within one day, you'll inevitably have lower quality sets. After you've done a few heavy sets for a specific muscle, the amount of force you'll be able to produce during later sets will decrease significantly. On the other hand, if you spread that volume out over the week, you'll be able to perform better for each set because you'll be less fatigued. Another reason why it's better to strain your muscles at least two times a week is because protein synthesis generally only stays elevated for about 72 hours after a workout. So, if you're training each muscle only once every 7 days, you'll only trigger growth for up to 72 hours that week. And during the other 96 hours of the week, you'll miss out on gains. Mistake number 2. Not consuming enough cholesterol. That's right, not consuming enough cholesterol can definitely slow your gains. A 12-week long strength training study found a linear dose-response relationship between dietary cholesterol intake and lean body mass gains, or in other words, muscle growth. This means that the more cholesterol they consumed, the more muscle they gained. In another study, researchers compared a high cholesterol diet of 800 mg per day to a low cholesterol diet of less than 200 mg per day and the high cholesterol group had almost three times higher muscle protein synthesis rates for 22 hours after intense resistance training than the low cholesterol group. This showed that the higher cholesterol diet was actually beneficial for muscle growth. The researchers concluded that cholesterol may aid muscle growth by helping your body cope with inflammatory responses and by enhancing cellular communication. Now, this is all, of course, within good reason. There are good sources of cholesterol and there are also bad sources of cholesterol. So make sure that you stick to eating enough healthy sources of fat to optimize muscle growth. Mistake number three, not focusing on getting stronger. The most important training principle for gaining muscle is that you must expose your muscles to a level of stimulus that they're not yet accustomed to. This is known as progressive overload. And while there are many ways to do this, the most effective way is by lifting heavier weights over time. And that's because there's a very close relationship between strength and size. For example, in Olympic weightlifters, there's an extremely tight relationship between fat-free mass, or in other words, muscle mass and performance. And in powerlifters, the relationship is even stronger, within an 86 to 95% correlation between a lifter's muscle mass and their strength and performance in the key power lifts like squats, deadlifts, and bench press. So that's almost 100% correlation. 
which would mean muscle mass and strength are essentially almost the same. The bottom line is that if you want to gain muscle, your main focus during your workouts should be on getting stronger. If you do this, you will gain muscle over time. Mistake number four, not doing enough training volume. Now, there are many ways that you can describe training volume, but the most useful way is as set volume, which refers to the number of sets you do per muscle group. If you're not gaining muscle, it may be because you're not doing enough training volume, since there's a clear dose-response relationship between training volume and muscle growth. This means that the more volume you do, the more you grow. In a meta-analysis that found that doing multiple sets per exercise led to 40% more muscle growth than doing only one set per exercise. The study also found that doing four to six sets per exercise was superior to two to three sets and two to three sets was better, of course, than only doing one set. On top of that, a 2018 study compared the results of men that did either one, three, or five sets per exercise over the course of eight weeks. This led to a total weekly number of sets per muscle group of six and nine sets for the one set group, 18 and 27 sets for the three set group, and 30 and 45 sets for the five set group. All sets were also taken to failure regardless of the group. And sure enough, once again, there was a clear dose-response relationship. That showed that higher training volumes led to significantly greater muscle growth. The researchers concluded that muscle hypertrophy follows a dose-response relationship, with increasingly greater gains achieved with higher training volumes. Now, it's important to note that more isn't always better. If you don't recover well from your workouts, you can start overreaching or even end up in an overtrained state, which hurts your progress rather than helps it. However, it is beneficial to raise training volumes slightly over time, especially if your progress has started to stall. As a rule of thumb, if you recover well between your workouts but you're not making any gains, try to slightly increase your training volume. If after incorporating more sets, you don't notice any muscle growth and you find it much harder to recover fully between workouts, then you can always reduce total training volume back to where it was. But if you do make good progress, and after a week or two of adapting, you find that you're recovering just fine between your workouts, then maintain your current training volume for some time and then continue trying to slightly increase it. Mistake number five, overdoing cardio. A 2012 meta-analysis found that adding cardio to a resistance training routine reduced muscle growth effect size by 39%. Although it is important to note that most of this reduction of muscle growth affected the lower body and not the upper body. But regardless, the reason why cardio hurts muscle growth is because not only does it take away from your calorie surplus that you need to be in for muscle growth, but it also reduces MTOR activity. MTOR is an enzyme that's crucial for muscle growth. At the same time, cardio also increases the catabolic enzyme AMPK, which is very bad for muscle growth. On top of all that, adding cardio to our resistance training plan can also reduce strength and performance. That's because cardio causes unfavorable muscle fiber changes. It lowers muscle activation speed and reduces your body's glycogen levels. As a result of all this, you won't be able to use the same amount of weight as you otherwise could, which means you can't provide an optimal amount of stimulus on your muscles to get them to grow. Mistake number six, not being in a calorie surplus. Now, besides all these training mistakes that you might be making, you're probably also making one or two diet mistakes as well. Starting first with not being in a calorie surplus. While you can build muscle in a calorie deficit in some scenarios, Mostly when you're a beginner, if you want to optimize growth, you need to be in a calorie surplus. Being in a surplus is beneficial because it triggers physiological changes that aid muscle growth. Examples of this include raising testosterone and IGF-1 levels while simultaneously lowering cortisol. These changes to your hormones increase muscle protein synthesis while reducing muscle protein breakdown, which simply means that it stimulates muscle growth. Now, it's important to keep in mind that a larger calorie surplus isn't always better. For example, I've mentioned in the past that there was a 12-week study that compared muscle strength gains among athletes who ate either a small calorie surplus or a much larger one with 600 extra calories. 
While both approaches caused the same amount of strength and muscle growth, those who ate a small surplus packed on five times less fat than those who ate an extra 600 calories. The point is that you only need a small calorie surplus to optimize muscle growth. Anything above that doesn't seem to cause faster growth, and instead, it only causes excessive fat gain. As a rule of thumb, a small calorie surplus of around 4 to 8% above maintenance is a great way to stay lean while bulking. Mistake number 7. Not getting enough protein. As most of you already know, protein is crucial for muscle growth. That's because the amino acids found in the food you eat end up being used as building blocks for your muscles. To be more specific, muscle growth occurs when more amino acids are built up within a muscle than the amount that gets broken down on a daily basis. If that happens, your muscles are in a positive nitrogen balance, which leads to growth. However, to get your muscles into the state requires that you eat enough protein. But how much exactly is enough? Well, according to a 2008 meta-analysis, the answer is at least 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. This works out to about 0.73 to 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight. So, if you weigh 176 pounds, that means you need to be getting at least 128 grams of protein per day. That'll allow you to maximize all the muscle building benefits of protein. Now, even though you're welcome to eat more than that if you want, it won't have any added benefits. Mistake number 8. Not training through a full range of motion. Finally, moving back to the quality of your workouts. Another issue you might be running into is you're not training through a full range of motion. Research shows that you'll get better gains if you train through a full range of motion. For example, one study randomly divided 17 male students into two groups. Group number one did deep squats three times per week for 12 weeks. Group number two followed the same exact routine except they only squatted through a partial range of motion. And the results showed that the deep squat group gained much more muscle on the quads than the group going for partials. In fact, as you can see in the image, the shallow squatters even lost muscle at some quad sites indicating that a full range of motion is by far superior. Other studies also show similar results. But you might be wondering what about going through a full range of motion helps you build more muscle. Well, first of all, it produces a higher level of muscle activation. The second thing is that different portions of a movement emphasize different parts of your muscles. So you might miss out on stimulating all parts of a specific muscle if you go for partial reps. On top of that, overloading muscles in their stretch position, which is something that you do with full range of motion exercises. That seems to be particularly important for muscle growth because it stimulates muscle hypertrophy by influencing the sarcomeres within your muscles in a way that increases a muscle's length, allowing for greater muscle building potential. So that about wraps it up, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys soon.